Welcome back to the LCS Challengers League. I brought back Lennon and I brought back Nate. They're here to bring us through with the next series. And we got Team Liquid first going up against CLG Challengers. And we got to talk about it a little bit, right? Because Team Liquid first have been struggling a little bit so far throughout the course of the season. They've hit the funny number and their record. And Lennon, what more can we kind of be asking for these guys looking to come forward? Because it feels as though as we get towards the end, we haven't necessarily seen this whole big burst of uh, movement from yeah. them. I think it's still uh, obviously a change up in the middle of the season on a roster that's struggling is never easy to continue to deal with. But we've seen some strengths when obviously City Witty is on those more like facilitated, facilitated, not facilitators, where he gets a lot of the farm, where Surdy yeah. has a lot of strength in the side lane. But speaking with Surdy in this week, he was like, Unfortunately, the meta that, that that's not that doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it, unfortunately, like we have to win on the other side of the map. So I really want to see some cohesion across the rest of the members, not just City Witty and Surdy. Nate, you sounded like you had something you wanted to jump in there. Yeah, just mostly that that top jungle of TLF have definitely been a bright spot for this roster, and the fact oh well, we're zooming in on me. Um, <laughs> and and it's true, this meta. Not good for top laners. You, you're you really good at top lane. Uh, feels bad, man. It's not that important. We're at a point where talking to Soul, saying that throwing away your level one entirely and just messing with the jungler, the enemy jungler, so you mess with his clear is way more valuable than anything else you could do in lane. And when he said that, I honestly felt a little bad for top laners. Yeah, you should be careful with that, Jay. If you take him by surprise, <laughs> yeah. he's going to kill me for a sandwich. And you don't want to know <laughs> what this guy's going to do. It was for pizza. Well, you said sandwich and pizza. then... I mean, it was sandwich and pizza. pizza. I'm hungry, sandwich. okay? Okay, it's okay. As we start looking a little bit more at the Team Liquid Honda first lineup, we will be able to take a look. And I do have to point something out for you guys. Is it just me, or does it look like City and Robix have like had their pictures put through a filter? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I guess... Yeah. A little bit of lighting there on City Witch. Yeah, like uh, Robex sure. has like anime eyes. Like I, I've seen this guy. Like <laughs> he, he, look, he doesn't look like it's like why he doesn't have anime through. eyes in real life. I mean, not that I've seen, but we have been seeing these guys. Nate definitely have a bit of a rough season. You pointed out the strong top lane, and they are going into another team that's got a pretty strong top lane going up against CLG Challengers and Jenkins. That's right. It's the story of tops today. Who's got that dog in them, Josh? As Jenkins is that player on this top side who has been, honestly, stand out among a team that's doing well overall. And this is a team that kept all of their players for last year with the addition of Hoppy. But Jenkins is that player that you've talked about it. A lot of people, a lot of tops in this league have talked about how he is a player that's very suffocating to play against. And it's just incredible seeing that growth from him between last year and this. I first and foremost love that uh, both Jenkins and Surdy are kind of trying to approach this matchup in the top lane a little bit differently in their own rights. I got to talk to both of them uh, in this week and getting to hear Surdy is like, all right, well, I got to find a way to affect the, with the rest of the team while Jenkins is saying, well, tanks are top. So let's see what happens with this. But I did get them to at least howl for me, uh, which we get to see who's That's got that matters. dog in them really and, and maybe uh, see who's got the better howl. Uh, typically for me, when I go up against Surdy, I think he's one of the players who likes to flip a lot of the carry matchups. Um, I do have like a few picks prepared for his carries, and generally, if the game goes even, I feel like I can find advantages in team fights. Yeah, so I think Surdy's actually been playing pretty decently given his situation. I think that he plays carries well. I actually haven't looked at his tank gameplay too much, but I, there's a I, there, I think there's a valid reason for why a lot of people like to ban champs like Jax and Bjorn against him, which is champs he's shown that he's pretty comfortable on. <laughs> there's kind of like two, <laughs> and it kind of depends. Like if the game's okay, so like if the game's over and like uh, I'm just usually I go, Ow! and if the other ones like if I'm running someone down, I go, <laughs> and like I just like run at them, right? And those are like the two kind of howls we do. <laughs> <laughs> There's two kind of howls, man. There's two. He gave me two of them. Two you different You always gotta have howls. a little bit of difference when you use them, right? There's yeah, for moods, you know. It just reminds me, like, of that old video. We constantly refer to it when Tomia was on Volley Bear, and he's on the bar, and he's like, "Oh, roar!" Every time he flashes over a wall, <laughs> yes. to stun someone. I want to yes. see that same kind of energy coming up in his streams. So we also had an opportunity. You had an opportunity to talk with the opponent, Surdy, to get a bit of a response to see what he thinks of going into Jenkins. It's not really like, as if I'm doing anything in particular. I, I think Jenkins is like 
he's solid in the sense that he has a lot of experience. Uh, I'm not sure how his comms or anything are because I've never been on a team with him, obviously. Um, I think his laning is kind of weak, and that's why he uses champions like Warwick and Ryan Necton and Gragas and these kinds of characters. Things like help him get through lane because he is confident in his ability to teamfight and move around the map due to the experience leverage he has of other players. So I don't think that he'll really pressure me that much. I'm not really worried about the individual 1v1, but I definitely need to try and stay one step ahead while rotating around inside lane in mid game. A little bit of a bounce wow. back there from Surdy. I, uh, you know, I had told Surdy, I was like, you know, Jenkins gave me two howls. And, <laughs> and then whenever I got into the interview with Surdy, he was like, I've been practicing the howls for like 30 minutes. Let's get it. <laughs> uh, shout outs to both of them for humoring me, though, because we got to figure out who's got that dog in over here. While oh. it might not be the biggest focus in top side, we might see some tank matchups, things like that. I think the two of them are still a lot of fun. Yeah. Surdy doesn't half-ass anything. If you ask him for something, he's either going to do it well or he's yep. not going to do it at all, right? <laughs> yeah, so here 100%. we go. But we do have Jenkins here on our screen. Jenkins has been one of the big players. And while Surdy doesn't know how much Jenkins communicates, I know Jenkins is one of the most talkative members here on CLG Challengers, Nate. Right, and that's really important, too, that usually when we talk about people who are big voices on the team, vocal leaders, you look at jungle, you look at support, but having a top laner that can add that level of comms, I think, is really impactful overall in a team environment. And, and maybe it's part of what's been allowing someone like Kevy to get a little more comfortable on the team. Because speaking of jungle, he was new, brought in almost in the middle of the regular split last summer, and was struggling. But now going into this year, right, he's adjusted. Copy fits this team like a glove, and CLG are looking great. Well, Lennon, as we start looking at their opponents, we keep coming back to it. It feels like the shining ray <laughs> of hope for Team Liquid First is, in fact, their top side in Sturdian City. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you get to see decisive moments like this that do lead to some great things for TLF, and especially against a team like Fear, right? But it has been that stark difference where. We've had the change-ups in bottom lane. We've had some of that craziness. And, and topside has been where they found a lot of their leads. Even in their losses, typically you're looking at topside with a couple kills up, right? And it's finding a way to utilize that, own that, and find wins with it. So as we start looking at the rest of this series, right, because it has so much of this focus on the top side, I mean, we obviously already look at uh, a lot of carry champions coming out from Surdy here, Lennon, and that's mm -hmm. going to be one of the big things where Jenkins, it feels like he's been a little bit more adaptable. He has a lot more tanks, he's got some of these carries, and he's got plenty of other things he can play as well. He said he's ready for it. He knows what Surdy brings to the table, and he wants to find a way to answer it. So I think it'll be really interesting to Bless see you. as we get into draft, hopefully, uh, very, very soon. But I do wonder, especially like the first phase, how that's going to deal out with this top lane. I was I think thinking Surdy's about that too, actually. Priority. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. But this one, Lenny, you're going to have to take it from me. I want it. Uh, ah! Oh, give it, give it. Give it. It's mine. It's mine. Take it, take okay. it, take it. <laughs> I got it. It's it's right here. Damn. So I'm going to put it right here. I, I, I think the one, I think the answer to our question is you, Lenny. Yes. You have that dog in you, apparently. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, I appreciate you, Joshi. I'm not going to take it that aggressively anymore. It feels too bad. Uh, but we are into our second series of the day. We got Team Liquid Honda first on the blue side, CLG Challengers on that red side. Now, when we see some of these bands, it's uh, typical bands, at least for TLF. They want to try to strengthen maybe the bot side a little bit or take some away from the bot side of CLGC. While on CLGC side, they are fully targeting City Witty with the Kindred and the Karthus bands. Makes sense. A big part of why this top jungle duo on TLF side are able to have the impacts they have are because of these picks in particular. And you limit that ability for City to have that impact later on. You have to rely on the rest of the map coming through here. And so far, I mean, they did manage to get to the funny number, but it has been a tough split for Team Liquid first. They are, of the affiliate teams, doing the best, though, and they're looking to keep mm -hmm. that record going up. Because the big thing is everyone makes it to playoffs. You're just trying to improve as much as you can so that you avoid relegation. I like this though from TLF. First and foremost, getting this Ash, we've seen be huge priority just yeah. today, but every other day it feels like. Uh, yeah. But we did see that final ban of the Elise and the Maokai for respective sides. So very, very heavy jungle matchup focus so far, at least in terms of the bans. We'll see obviously some tried and true ones still available, still up and at least for Kevy, maybe a little bit of something with uh, some forward aggression.
a little punch, you might say. And I mean, that's something that we've seen, Kevy. Uh, huh? Yeah, exactly. And Kevy has been like that kind of player where he'll play whatever. Uh, I mean, clearly messing around with a couple uh, different jungle hovers. But realistically, we've seen a lot of him on things like the Vi, the Sejuani. So this is that perfect pick here. And now we just look to the other side of what's the play Ooh. here. Caitlyn is actually... I mean, it, it does get banned often, but it's coming out here for Mage. This is an easy setup for a Kate Lux. And I mean, unless we see maybe a Varus there for TLF, that's going to be a really yeah. difficult bot lane to deal with. I'm really, really liking this approach from CLGC. I know we are hovering over Jenkins, talking to him a little bit. And he was like, well, I, I just, you know, have answers to Surti and the rest of the map will do the, the rest of the work. And I love that they're going yeah. with such aggression in the bot lane for a bottom lane that has had some of that troublesome water there for Team Liquid Honda first. Now, they will grab some safety, some utility down there with that Ash and Jin combo. And we'll see what their last pick of the third, or the, at least the third pick in their first phase is going to be. Right, and this is something they've ran before very recently. Again, this is utility focused spot lane. You give options towards that top side of the map. It is unorthodox as far as this meta go, but it's what TLF got going for them. And it's going to be another farming jungler in the graves for City Witty. So it's the same archetype, uh, just not the Karthus or the Kindred. Uh, still so, so very strong if you can get farmed up and find a lot of that damage coming from City Witty. So that makes me kind of look at that game plan we said that usually works out for TLF and so far so good in that front. Now it is the Karma down in the bottom side. So some more pokes, some more oppression down there against a double ADC comp that doesn't have a lot of mobility. Yeah, and I think this is a fine switch up too because if you you don't have to go for these fights, especially against the Jin, mm -hmm. you can really neutralize a lot of these lanes. So at this point now, you go for Karma, you have more utility later in the game, and you also are able to push so much more aggressively with all the damage she sure. has in her kit. So you're going to get that bottom prio really easy for CLG to Dragon Stack and things like that. And of course, when Jenkin, uh, rather when Kevy shows up on the Vi, you get a lead on this Caitlyn. I mean, We've seen that movie before. I don't need to tell you how it ends. <laughs> we have seen it uh, maybe a couple times. Uh, now that a couple last bands here for CLGC are going to be the Galio. So taking away something that can come out of mid lane and yeah. help the rest of the team for aspect. But as well as the Jax, that needs to be taken away from Surdy. Now the Fiora is still on the table. Maybe something that Jenkins is waiting for here yeah. with a response. But I do like the, the Talia. And I guess whatever we get is this last band should be that mid lane focus. And there you go. It Ooh. is the Akali. Yeah, something Copy played, I mean, just yesterday to some pretty good success and something he's been playing a lot. So now it's just going to be Copy immediately going on the rise. Another fan favorite for him. And it does mean that now what's Aspect going to be playing here? We saw the Azir hover. The Annie, I mean, she got nerfed a little on this patch, but it's Perfect. actually still pretty good. And so it's going to be an Annie mid it coming through here. And it's nice because right. you have... All the CC you get to layer on with the, uh, her passive and especially big plays with that Tibbers later on. So you can really layer on with the Ash Arrow. And I'm so interested in how they kind of use this aspect coming off some pretty good games last week as well. And, yeah. and looking for maybe a little bit of that back end uh, here in the sixth week. Uh, I do want to see though, as it actually is already locked in there, I believe, in just a moment. You get that there Fiora you that was left open for Surdy, believing in the power of the side lane. And now we get the Jenkins response. That's right. And we're going to see what he ends up going for here. Honestly, oh, Kennen would be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a fan. <laughs> get the you know, you're, you're lacking classic. a little bit in all in, but also it's a good matchup into Fiora because you, know, you have range. You can keep her over there at arm's length. The He's Warwick. Got the dog in no, no, no. He's got the dog in oh! He's doing it. Oh! 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 Let's go. Oh my God, that's incredible. I love it. Jacob said he had something prepared, but he was leading me down the tank path. We are not going tanks, my friend. We're going Warwick wow. for Jenkins, and he will be facing off against Surdy. It is not going to be the the pool noodle fight that we normally get. We right. Get some fisticuffs. So the biggest thing I'm interested in is what TLF's going to do level one, because we've seen more than once. I mean, we were talking about it before going to draft, how top laners, they go for these invades. You mess with the jungler level one so that you can, I mean, mess with their clear. We saw against, seen against Wildcard how Moose Hater and Saligo got, uh, not Saligo, Moose Hater and Keel got 1v2 at their red buff. And it, they, I hope TLF's ready because Jenkins could very well try that again. I am really interested in what the level one looks like here. I, I think, 
I will say, CLG, they have a lot of insurance for their later part of the game, right? You obviously have Copy, who has been just so on point in these games for CLG challengers on a late game hyperscaling mage that has a yep. lot of say with the realm warps and things like that side lane pressure so there is a lot going for clgc and i'm looking at that bar of execution here the utility coming from bot lane from tlf and this 30 versus jenkins matchup in the top lane right i mean clg's comp is, i'm glad you highlighted copy because that's who i have my eyes on as well just because of that realm warp level six you have this bot lane that you want to play through you have this top lane that you honestly want to play through as well so copy and kevy have a lot of options to move together post six to move and affect these side lanes and when you look at tlf side bot lane i mean you're looking to absorb pressure you're not you're just looking to not fall too far behind not give your life too often and it's again this top side of the map that we look at here surdy took the ignite and flash no teleport so it's really focused on this lane against jenkins and that's the barrier for jenkins too so i think jenkins Classic. thinking a lot the same <laughs> trying to get a little bit of that back and forth here especially being able to dissuade some of the damage but also get some of that healing back but as we get to it oh jungler starting on the bot side of the map and i think we all know where that leads us to but use that right. hashtag nacl if you want to get into the conversation maybe get your own howls in here uh we'll see if you can get on stream but right now it should be just uh, a little bit calm early game wow hey, there we go there i we was go. actually just thinking what if someone tweets Ao and then there you go shout out clg showing support for the team here in the challengers league and we gotta find out i mean we have the top lane matchup that we were hoping for here no wet noodles it's about who's got that dog in them and right now i mean 30's 30's not having a good time see as the lane progresses obviously we're getting so high but it will be a little while till the top yeah. lane comes online for at least some skirmishing back and forth but for now it is looking at that oppression for bot lane delivered by meet and breezy themselves on the caitlin and the karma bot lane so far lgx and rovex getting a good bit of poke back here so kind of slowing down the push that meet and breezy are going for but it's getting there and i mean lgx is a player who came in very recently emergency sub actually last uh earlier on this weekend or last week actually excuse me and has been a player who early struggles but coming in on such short notice is something i mean they appreciate a lot on the side of team liquid first talking to the coaching staff and also good to see how much better he's played since that first debut now that he's had time to work with the team now that he's had a little yeah. more time to get used to the challengers league and something i love here this is beautiful pathing for city witty the deadly oh. flourish doesn't connect that is heartbreaking. That was a moment for TLF to utilize the, the pressure absorption that Surdy is able to provide in the top yeah. lane, knowing that he has such mastery of these top lane matchups in the 1v1s. But they can't capitalize on it. CLG on top of their game here. That's right. So, does mean Breezy does won't have summoner spells. He said he could go for a repeat gank very, very soon. The problem is, though, now, if he's going to come in and realize, oh, hey... Look at this blue buff for me. Oh, you shouldn't have the consequences of city full clearing bot and then showing pot. Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, we di we didn't get any of that uh, crazy level one shenanigans against from the top. Three. They're both pretty focused on the top lane matchup itself. Peeking out a little back and forth there. We did see visit from the jungle in the mid lane. We got city witty there. Scuttle crab should go over. It's just been a trade early on from both these junglers. But now we do see them trending up towards this top side of the map. And uh, should see a little bit of focus here if they can get a gank in early on. And again, I think City Witty is in a position where he's fine farming. We've seen them be successful yeah. when he does just get these resources to let himself chill. Right. So losing the blue buff, not the end of the world. This means that you're going to be careful about losing your respawn camps in the coming minutes. The, what might be close to the end of the world is the fact that Kevy is here. Oh, we see it because of our spectator mode. What? Thirty knows what's up. Nice bait out. Now City Witty is here. This is a turnaround from TL oh, this first. Is really good. They're turning back around though. Jenkins healing up a decent amount, putting that dog in him. And getting a bit of a bounce back from CLG. It was looking a bit dicey. It was. It was a good answer from City. Because if that was any other champion, Lennon, it's possible. Oh, flash from copy, trying to get the prison. Is that the speed up from the phase rush there? And uh Rovex makes it out with this flash burn a really good response honestly like it's it's so very quickly 
Rune Prison can come down for the root, but Rovex manages to get away. And you see Aspect as well, getting closer and closer to that level 6, both these mids, and will in their own way be able to impact the rest of the map as a result. Again, look at a copy, that first Realm Warp. Where is he going to go? I mean, realistically, the top is an option, bot is also an option. Could be, and we'll be getting to that, uh, I'm sure, shortly. Dragon is up on the table here, and we see City pathing down this way, at least with this clear. Should see uh, maybe that bit of a response from Heavy. We'll see mid lane, though. Tibbers has been popped, and Copy ain't got much of a response here. One more shotgun shot. The damage from the auto attack of Aspect gets him first blood for Team Liquid Honda first. Tell you what, Lennon, I don't know about you, but when I get a last hit for a kill, with an auto attack as a mage, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> so really nice punish. The fact that Copy used his flash to try and kill Rovex earlier. It's a nice move for City Witty. It's going to get you a little more control over the river, but this bot push means that you can't go for the dragon. I mean, City is just going to happily go back to farming his camps. That's the actually just promise that you need from City. Like, if I could just stop by, help something happen, go back to farming, I'm perfectly yep. fine. And now I'm looking at Kevy to get a one up here in some sort of way for CLG. As you see, Jenkins using a control ward early on to City Witty's blue buff. It will be Dragon going to CLG Challengers. Hey, the beauty of Bot Pryo. Also, having a rise mid means you will have that opportunity. But look, Copy is He's also back. on the move. There's a dive on the way, maybe. So this is such an interesting play, at least from TL First. I kind of highlighted earlier where they were fine letting Surdy kind of chill in the side lane, knowing that yeah. the side lane pressure will be very difficult later on for CLG to at least deliver onto. We'll see what Jenkins has to say about that one. But they're putting kind of all those eggs into getting LJX Rovex out of this lane or helping in this lane as much as they can. That's right. And at the same time, it hasn't really impacted City's ability to farm. You can see it, especially with that... Uh, investment from Jenkins dropping that pink ward in the topside jungle to make sure that if Kevy goes for it I mean you have that opportunity to vertical jungle do a bit of trading of camps just to ensure that city doesn't lose too many camps or fall far behind so far it's only been the blue buff that Kevy's taken and all that time ganking has allowed city as well to just catch up we have copy getting that level six mark now we'll be looking at those first realm warps especially next moves from CLG it actually looks like Aspect might be on roam. Daz gets spotted out and doesn't go into the bush. No! He doesn't get the control ward, doesn't oh. know. But yeah, uh, I don't Jenkins think we see it. knows. He uh, will be spotted on that little ward now. Doesn't realize that Aspect is there until maybe a little bit too late. Aspect over the wall with the Tempers. Yet again, oh, the barrier wow. is not enough to defend. And as the horses charge through, Team Liquid will be taking that Rift Herald and another kill for themselves. Yeah, good movement from Aspect to avoid that pink ward. Only got noticed, like you said, when he walked over the scuttle. He's another kill goes through in favor of Team Liquid first. A little behind in gold because bot lane has been going very well for Meech and Breezy. But this is still something you can work with as TLF. You have the Herald. You got a kill onto this Graves. who is going to be a big damage dealer, a big carry threat later on into the game. Accelerating City is still worth it. The thing is, though, as you had kind of talked about, <laughs> Meech and Breezy getting a lead bot lane, uh, that's yeah. not something you necessarily want. Meech is literally nope. one of the most mechanically gifted ADCs we have in this league, and he will just press that right. down smash button on you if you give them any lead. They've already gotten four plates and nine minutes in, and this CS lead to boot 30 as well. City Witty has been down here, but he has not affected what Meech and Breezy have come away with. And perfect timing. We can just look at the gold difference here really quick before this play happens topside. And it's just that a thousand gold for Meech in the CS that he's gotten so far, in the turret place that he's been able to grab for himself. And you just need to get the Kaelin out and go to another lane. Get more turret place. Exactly. As soon as you can do that, the more gold CLG are just going to be racking up. It just gets that much easier. So the, again, we highlighted how LJX, Rovex, needs to minimize their losses a little bit. You still have some bright spots for tlf i mean you have people who can get on top of meech so even though he has cleanse oh i need to hold this 
Yeah, Aspect in trouble. He has Tibbers, does get the stun down. He's still going to die, but maybe City Witty and Rovex to make something happen here. Kevy flashes out. The heal comes through for oh, Breezy as well. So close. He's chasing down Copy here, but Any second. can't do it. Just not enough damage. Oh. TL back off. It's brutal. Collateral damage only just came off cooldown for City Witty. Does mean Aspect goes down, but this Graves will be able to get some farm in these turret plates. But it's a good play from CLG. Haven't seen the Realm Warp come through yet, but that first use of the Cease and Desist, very impactful here. And again, this bot lane matchup, isolated, very much in favor of Meech. God, and it just he already has the Gale Force under 10 minutes. That's actually kind of scary. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he's he's sitting pretty down there, and uh, yeah, they're just honestly looking to get this tower, looking to get some kills, as headshots are available, but also that ace in the hole, tower number one going down to CLG, I'll push this lead to just about two thousand gold now. Oh lord, and the lead, especially between bot laners, just continues to grow. Now at this point, Meech has the, the ability to highly impact this game. And now we're just looking for that rotation. You set it, Lennon, you get the Caitlyn ahead, you get that first turret, all five plays. Well, it's time to get another five plays and another five plays, because we're still a few minutes away from that 14 minute mark. And honestly, at this point, you Going just attack mid that mid lane and then set yourself up for the dragon. Yeah, Realm Warp available. Maybe play onto Aspect there. Tibbers is back and up. Rovex is here with the Enchant Crystal Arrow. A bit of defense from TL, but maybe not enough here. They don't have enough members uh -oh. as the collapse starting to come through. You know, to get the CC locked down. Ace in the hole is coming now, but that Tibbers response, oh, the response so big. And now the curtain call. Can he land the shots to set it up? It should be a, at least defense under the tower here. Collateral damage did a lot as well as that fourth shot. And another turret play maybe going down as Deadly Flourish finishes it off. LJX should get that one. They move down to the dragon as well. And man. What a different look and feel from Team Liquid on to first when they're coming into these fights. All right, it's a good response. They're trying to make more plays on their end as well, and it means that they are going to slow down the dragon stacking that CLG have gotten for themselves and keep the game overall slowed down a little bit. It's tough because you see the commitment that they're going for, and because of the bot lane difference, the gold isn't there for LJX and Rovex yeah. to really turn these fights, really start getting those kills when they go for plays like these and that means you do have to rely more on aspect and city and certainly when he gets involved for these plays to be working out here it's just all about utility for ljx and rovex this game and that might cause issues later on i'm curious to see how this uh fiora first warwick matchup affects the later parts of the game especially wanting to see kind of that potential from Surdy to be the side lane threat but also maybe a little bit of flank play going through here and I, i'm especially now looking at these first items coming online and the majority of them on key members obviously you got the kempunk chain sword for kevy got the gore trinker there completed for city witty the roa already stacking up for aspect as well it's pretty good he is ahead of copy does have that advantage overall coming through there we'll have that stacked first and i like this was move from team liquid first also they recognize that Surdy's under a lot of a threat right now. Jenkins is shoving that wave. So the rest of the team move up to try and cover for him. We're getting to this point where turret plates are falling. Meech has gotten a lot of gold so far. So they're still in a very good position on CLG's side to not only output damage, but to team fight. Because as much as Surdy's Fiora is formidable, and he has quite literally carried games with it, it isn't as useful as something like a Warwick simply because of the ultimate, that infinite duress. No one here, I mean, you have to have QSS, you can't cleanse it. So there is no way for anyone on TLF side, yeah. unless you parry it a certainty, to avoid that lockdown. Well, we do get the uh, first items for the top lane. The Who's got that dog in them uh, matchup, especially with the dog on one side of it. But we do get the uh, Gore Drinker, at least complete for certainty. That Blade of the Rune King first item for Jenkins. We see onto the map now, though, that Rift uh, has kind of gone a little bit more quiet. Uh, we're looking actually now that Meech coming to mid lane and some farming from Jenkins in the side to ensure some denial of TLF. Oh man, he's going deep too. Takes that hex gate. Can 1v1 anybody? Realistically, now that that Blade of the Rune King is up. The deep flank. He spotted yeah. out. Yeah. They'll, they'll see him. So now this Herald is the big fight here. Remember, Meech has all the gold. 
If TLF take him out of a picture, very winnable fight. Copy's coming down. Kevy wants to find an, an access. He does on Rovex. Here comes Jenkins as well. Kevy's already gone. The Rift Herald goes down. Deadly Flourish goes a little bit wide, and TLF have come out on top here. I believe that Kevy uh, did not wow. get that Rift Herald. So it was City Witty, and TLF just continue to take fights even if they're down. And they get another objective in their pocket. That's a big win for them because they kill Kevy. They get the Rift Herald. It means they have an opportunity to drop another turret. I'm, I hope we get a replay because I'm interested to see how that Herald was secured in the moment. But ultimately, so far, Meech hasn't really had an opportunity to make full use of the gold he's earned in that laning phase. And that will change as we get into more straight up team fights in the future. But so far, it's been really good Oof. for TLF. Punishing overextension of members like Kevy and just playing to their strengths in this early game. So we do get a replay of that one and how it all started off. TLF were in position to take the Swift Herald and then the fight ensued. That's right. You can see I mean, with that W from Aspect, they know that everybody is just covering around this bush. And Kevy's just looking for the play realistically. Goes on top with that cease and desist and Meech is just out of range not able to actually drop any damage and by the time the auto attacks come through i mean they're dropping everything on kevy it is unreal and it's because of the herald position all that damage coming through was enough for tlf to also get it for themselves was indeed and now we're looking back with the dragon spawning in about a minute the second dragon for either side a little bit of stacking game maybe going their way but i did want to check back in at kind of not lane states anymore since we've had so much chaos, yeah. but there is definite CS advantages that are playing into this 2,000 gold lead for CLG. Bot lane, but as well as Jenkins having almost that 40, 30 CS yeah. lead over 30. That lead top lane really starting to grow. However, because of the kill, it isn't the biggest lead of 400. City Witty, though. Gold. Not too shabby. Yeah. yeah, City Witty, almost 2k up. That's what we like to see, and him being that player, is that is... A good win con for TLF to be playing for, especially with this Gore Drinker Graves can really stay in the fight for a long time. And I mean, the more you do that, you buy space for Aspect, who's going to be putting out a lot of damage oh later God. on into the game. This is just going to keep happening every time. Yeah. It's going to get worse and worse. As uh, Rift Herald actually gets spawned up in mid lane by City. They're going to try to go on to meet, but he's too quick. Breezy's right there behind him, ready to go as well. They can guide oh, this Hawk charge. No, it's going to go off. The hawk shot was good, too. Does TLF know now that Kevy is in the area. Wow, City is just really feeling it with the tankiness. This build, <laughs> he's just going to walk up. Doesn't care. And what does that mean now? It's Herald. Uh, it's Dragon time. Excuse me. And Team Liquid first are the ones who are building up towards some stacking. And I mean, good respect from Aspect, too. He walks away, sacks the turret. They clear in the mid lane from LJX as they do take that dragon. Trying to keep priority here as best as possible. Aspect just trying to be a little bit of a floodgate in side lane. Dragon does eventually go down to TLF. Nothing there for Jenkins to do unless somebody wanted to get caught out. We actually see Copy continuing to press topside. And he is getting uh, to some extent a little bit scary as his own presence. Yeah. But Kevy hovering near him does make that even worse. Now, Surdy needs a little bit of help here. There's oh, the CC chain no. and Jenkins with the solo. The timing on the arrow, a little unlucky. While you're traveling with that Warwick ultimate, you are unstoppable. But as soon as you start swiping, you're good to get stunned. So Jenkins got to get the whole combo off and gets the solo, especially against uh, a lot of Oz there with Rovex coming in with the arrow. And Jenkins with that response here to Surdy, we heard him talk about in the interview, it was about dealing with his sideline pressure some of these picks that are more aggressive well he waited in the right direction and just unleashed onto surdy yeah can we just talk about real quick how there are three members of team liquid first on this bottom side of the map and jenkins is like eh whatever because he's just got that surdy. dog in him all right what if i told oh. you jenkins had that dog in him lennon i mean he had two howls was that a ooh, 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 or was that a yeah ooh? yeah i think that was a ooh, 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 ooh. I think that was like yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that one too. Yeah. I think he's still looking for those too. At this point, uh, he's just hovering the backside. There's a monster in the bushes, and Surdy is finally here to respond on him. But the whole time this has been happening, Copy has just been unrelentlessly pressuring Aspect at the top side under a tier two. Right, all that pressure on the bottom side of the map. 
going for dragon setting up this mid play means aspect is lost so much having to respect the fact that kevy was hovering copy on the top side so even though early on we got a good early roa from aspect that's where that lead ends because now seraphs is complete for copy this is a really strong spike yeah. for rise and you look at michu's also hit that second item point so team liquid first find themselves in a big deficit again and you're not in a position to actually fight for anything you need some like wild pick from the aspect flash stunning somebody rovex hitting an arrow cross map something like that because straight up 5v5 at this moment you lose not looking pretty so far we're gonna now set up around mid lane for clg if ljx steps up just a little bit too far it's coming over the wall luckily there was a little bit of a trap there you know how much this ace in the hole does all right all right still a lot of damage uh, while TLF did not really find anything on the top side on Jenkins, he will still just be up there to farm it up. And uh, so is Copy. So plans working out for CLG as they came into it saying, you know, we have a little bit of spice maybe on the top side of the map, but it's all stability everywhere else. That's right. And we're just looking at CLG side. A lot of that, of course, Jenkins getting this matchup with the Warwick into Fiora and has been very confident in it and how he's been playing on the top side. And you look at Copy also. On a comfort pick in the rise and how incredible it has been for clg so far this game despite the activity from team liquid first clg they hold strong and it's going to continue to prove a problem for team liquid first because again the team fighting skills are not, not of the players but the comp itself are still up for question yeah they are indeed i uh, need to see those executions here potentially but I'm definitely looking at those second items for TLF, wondering when they will be coming online. Trying to get Hopefully as much soon. gold on the map as possible, but so far been really uh, choked out a little bit in those terms. Still see a pretty good lead for City Witty, but everywhere else it's uh, looking a little bit rough. And so when you're looking at these next steps, I think that is that calm calculation we've seen from a very lethal CLG challengers in the late half of the split. And this is the team that a lot of people, a lot of players in the Challenger League say, just from scrimming them, from playing against them, that this they have the potential to be one of the best teams in the league. And it's really showing in series like these. You see how they constantly have control of all three lanes. Very common that they play and draft for this sort of style. They always have this 1-3-1 one, one going. And it's just hey, been aspect. so effective against TLF. Yeah, I mean... You Jenkins, you don't even care. Oh, copies out just in the nick of time. And now oh, hey. here comes the LG. Not able to get a little bit of a wraparound gank there. A little bit, but not, not, not a full commit. It's looking like as Team Liquid you know first say, again. I mean, in, in challenges, we commit to the bit, right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I want to see Team Liquid first do. I mean, they're trying. You see Robex throw the arrows out, seeing who they can catch. And that's really your only option. Like we were highlighting Lennon. He's getting kited down here. Jenkins does He's still have a flash. Wall. He's as just going to ult. Easy does it as on the other side of the map. All this pressure has given CLG challengers the opportunity to take their second dragon. And I like the attempt on the top side because honestly, you see this happen with a number of teams in Challengers League where you're in mathematically absolutely no position to contest this trick oh you know what let's walk into the dragon pit anyways but tlf they understand that they're like you know what this is not ours we're gonna make a play top side Rovex will take a meaty chunk of damage but so too oh, will no. he flashes collateral damage but it doesn't matter the bullets just keep on coming now, Surdy trying to respond. A deadly flourish back, but it misses. He goes golden. Kevy in some trouble now. Takes that tower shot. Goes down. Surdy does too. And it's uh, almost ace now. Aspect yep. to try to get something down. Tippers is here. Gets stunned down. Though Meek just so much damage. And so does Copy. The flash out over the wall gets Aspect out. The lone remaining survivor oh. of the Team Liquid Honda first. And that's on to the Baron for CLG. And I like that. No sums on aspect. No timbers means nobody is going to stop you from taking this bear. And CLG looking to snowball their way into a fast game one win. Because this buff is how they continue to push the pace here. And the buy that we're going to see from these guys is unreal. I mean, look at that. Meech not only finishes his RFC, but he buys an Elixir of Wrath as well. Yeah. And we're going to look at the replay. God. The damage is coming through. And this time around, City's on his own. He tries 
tanky as he might be to live, but it just wasn't enough. CLG, despite getting punished a tiny bit for the all-in, this is well within their purview to just be able to continuously putting on pressure like this. The grand challenge does get popped. It gives that to cool. on the other side. Uh, it doesn't do much in the end of things. I love Aspect's willingness here. Yep. And uh, does have that flash to make sure he can get out. So at least he does get a little bit back there. Does defend that tier 2 tower in the mid lane. So that does feel Ad good in its own right. Yeah, the damage wasn't quite there. But you defend the turret as you say. An aspect now, two items, needlessly oh, large rod. This, That's a good this bit turret's of not defended. <laughs> this was, that turret this doesn't exist gone. anymore. It's a yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. third item spike for Meech. He says, You have no tower anymore. Yeah, worth noting, Meech did pop uh, by the elixir. I want to check and see if he oh. popped it because I, I mean, don't see it's it got to be. It's not in the inventory. City Witty, though, locked down under tower. And even with this tower watching, he still. Just laid into the ground by CLG Challenger. They have this Baron for another minute and a half, and they're not relenting anytime soon. I mean, with this gold lead, the fact that you're up a man, this ba these, tur there's, these turrets won't last much longer. You can see it, especially with this focus bot. The realm? No, that wasn't the realm warp. Um, it was the trap, Copy's and you just see Copy. Right now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, oh. Copy. He's getting a little bit low. Surdy pops that grand challenge, and they caught out Copy here. Big shutdown to Aspect. Not much that CLG could do to respond to that one. Jenkins will be getting this uh, top side. We'll see if uh, they maybe can break down a little bit more. Yeah, you know what? Oh, okay, Crystal Arrow. There's a stun won. from Aspect as well. Surdy stun wants again. some revenge. Oh, oh, Jenkins tries to flash, but he can't get out. He does use the infinite to rest, but it's still into the waiting arms of Surdy, who says, welcome home, my friend. But still, CLG, they continue to trade. They can keep punishing that overcommitment TLF have to use to get any kill on their side, and they just keep losing turrets. Bot inhibitor is down. Mid is exposed, and all Surdy can do is maybe trade this tier one. And we see the gold differences. It is unreal from Meech in the bot side. 4,000 plus gold up over LJX, and it shows every time he throws out an alternato. It does, and uh, he has a backup speaking up, but now he's getting into headshot range and Surdy getting his health bar. Chunk Grand Challenge out, though. Kevy, he should go down. The Healy coming through, but Aspect has to go golden. Now TLF around the corner. Gale Force there for LJX. They're trying to get back in it. City when he found copy. Meech is going to be gunned down here by the curtain call if, unless he can dodge out. We said he's got the mechanics. The fourth shot not going Woo. to connect. City when he wants to find it, but no longer has the tools to run him down. They just can't touch Meech this whole game, Lennon. They try, they can barely force out summoners, and now finally, they manage to get them out. But there isn't anything to do to punish. Now they just, Meech gets to recall, CLG gets to spend all their gold, and they continue having this incredible gold lead. Just in time for Dragon to spawn in 30 seconds. It's gonna be their sole point. Gotta deal with the super minions in bottom lane at least, but See if there's an attempt given at TLF as we hit this replay. And this is a CLG. They're pulling the trigger whenever they want. You have an incredibly fed AD carry. Like, oh yeah, just send it. Let's go. Just and you see, it. yeah, but 30, I mean, Fiora still pretty strong champ at this state in the game. So they commit a lot to take him out of the picture. Maybe too much because you think about Meech, the real fed member is able to use the 90 caliber net, use yeah. the flash to be able to dodge even the Gale Force as we go back to live and see the dragon getting taken. What's that little thing I've seen now twice from Kevy? I thought at first maybe it was just something that happened, but now I've seen it. He gets the grand challenge used on him. When he's about to die, he tries to get as far away from the team as possible yep. uh, to drop that healing circle yeah. on the rest of TLF. So little minute things. And now with second item completions, third item completions, Rabidon's there for copy. It is the CLG death squad coming for TLF. Right, so the burst damage, all things considered, is there for Team Liquid first. Now with the death cap being finished, and then you see the black cleaver, you see other components City is holding on to at the moment here. Again, you still have that opportunity to pick people off as the super minions have actually let you pick up a good amount of gold and XP. You see the gold lead narrowing a little bit for CLGC, but it's tough. We're four minutes away from the Dragon Soul. We're one minute away from the Baron. It's between these moments or where TLF are gonna find their way back into this one, if ever. 
Try to get some gold back at least. Maybe get that third item for LJX in some capacity. We do look at that gold. Surdy has found that little bit of a lead. He got a little yeah. bit of a lead for City Witty. And then you just don't look at the rest of the map. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, TLF definitely it wanting to try to find something. Yeah, I will say Surdy was behind a good bit earlier on. So it's pretty big of him to be able to catch up. And that's why now you have to use whatever the gold side lane you have. Yeah. And find a way to integrate it. That's the problem. Like, not a team fighter. And 1v1, I mean, we saw what happened. Jenkins Warwick is too strong. And at this point, with Baron up, if you overcommit to the side lane, you lose a major objective. City Witty's pretty aggressive here. He's getting engaged on. He's just oh, out. Oh, no. He's just out there in front. It goes down. Copy with a rubber behind now. Jenkins coming through. He does have an engaged Tibbers. Last out of by Copy, and Copy has found Rovex too. Cerny's trying to survive against Jenkins, but he leaves Aspect there, who does have a stun available. But Meech trying to chase down Cerny, get the shield done, and that should be a couple members surviving for TLF. But I can't say the Not same enough. about the base. Nope, it's, this is gonna be it. This is the death push for CLGC. They're just gonna knock on these turrets, and it's gonna take an incredible move from Aspect and Cerny. And we'll see if that defense ever has a chance. Surdy needs to find a little bit of something. One Nexus Tower has fallen. Then Super Minions are starting to crash. Meech is finding the targets he needs to. And maybe even finding Surdy back here as well. Copy chasing down Aspect. He gets stunned by the Tippers. And here comes the rest of the TLF. Oh, He'll wait. try to get a defense here. The Nexus oh, is getting mind. so low. Just Breezy. Yeah. He auto attacks it to finish it off. And CLG Challengers win game number one. And I got to say, Lennon, despite some good looks from Team Liquid first, things we've been seeing from a lot of our struggling provisional teams at the moment, it wasn't enough to close out. CLGC, they played that full court press just too well, affecting all three lanes, and it was off the back of the Warwick. At the end of the day, the Warwick. even with Surdy taking Ignite in that matchup, Jenkins was just too strong in the 1v1, and it was the main point of TLF, just couldn't make it work. Yep. To respect the man himself, he's got that dog in him, so we're going to yes, give him sir. a howl to send him off. Oh, 